Next on the delegation, the senators. There is no playbook for be being a senator. There is no handbook that you get to read. Senators Patty Murray and Maria Cantwell are among the top leaders in Washington. Up next, the challenges they face as women in the halls of the Capitol. When I first went into the Senate, there were only two women. Our state is giving, you know, a face to what women governing is all about. The difficulty of getting things done when partisan bitterness is at an all-time high. In this environment of such animosity, you have to find the common ground and push it forward. And I think there are people in Congress today and have been who really don't want this country and this government to work well. And facing dismal approval ratings, why they're still passionate about the job. I absolutely believe that my job is to make sure the people in Washington state have a seat at the table when it comes to federal issues. The Senators, next on The Delegation. Local production and broadcast of The Delegation was made possible in part by a generous grant from the Evans School of Public Affairs at the University of Washington. Leading the field in public policy and management education, research, and service for over 50 years. And by KCTS 9 members. Become a member today by going to kcts9.org. Thank you. From Washington State to Washington, D.C., they are the women and men you elected to represent us all in Congress. This is the delegation. Senators, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate yeah. it. Well, well, let's begin with a comment from a former Secretary of Defense, someone that I'm sure both of you know, and that's Robert Gates. He said, I truly believe that at this point, the single greatest danger to our national security and our economy resides in the two square miles that encompass Capitol Hill and the White House. Here, I'm referring to the dysfunction that has gripped the U.S. political system in recent years, culminating in the government shutdown. Pretty tough words. Do you agree? Can well, I jump in? Sure. Because, I, you know what, I, I really want to applaud Senator Murray, because at a time when we had the biggest morass in Washington, D.C., and no one thought we could get anything done, Patty Murray got something done with Paul Ryan. And I like to say it was a giant step for bipartisanship, because she showed the results, and then Barbara Mikulski got something done. I want Patty to talk about this, <laughs> but you just wrote a description that Patty went against the grain on, and we owe her a great debt of gratitude. Yeah, and that was a challenge well, to get that yeah, done. Th thank you, Maria. And look, that, that's exactly that frustration about wanting our democracy to work really is what Congressman Paul Ryan and I brought to the room to negotiate. Uh, both of us could have said no, both of us could have said we're going to fight our fights, but both of us felt really strongly that our country wasn't working and we needed to show the American people that a democracy can work and that really drove us to get a budget agreement done. That's how it has to work. There still is this feeling in the country that um, Washington is broken, the other Washington, not this one. Yeah, well, I think that um, there have been a lot of examples of where uh, people's going into a corner, not talking to each other, making everything political, has really made our government not work well. Uh, and I think there are people in Congress today, and have been, who really don't want this country and this government to work well. They, they want to go home and say, I fought that Washington, D.C., and I, you know, kept it from doing something. Um, that attitude is, I think, really over time, very, um, very damaging to our country. Uh, we have to make this country work. We have to find ways to agree and find common ground. Certainly there are political issues and certainly there are differences of opinion, but at the end of the day, we have to make this country work. And I think, you know, for me and I think, you know, for Patty, is that even with the animosity of the Tea Party, pulling the Republicans apart, saying don't even talk to the other side of the aisle, you have to find where you can find common ground. Uh, for me, we focused on the farm bill and worked with Senator Johans and said, all of us who believe in a strong agricultural economy want a farm bill. We got 72 people to sign on to a bill. Harry Reid made it a priority. We're close to getting that done. It's taken a lot longer than I would have wanted, but I think so in this environment of such animosity, you have to find the common ground and push it forward. And again, Patty found that with Paul on the budget when other people thought you couldn't find it. So it really is, you know, getting sharper in your focus. And 
uh, that's what we're trying to do. Much has been said about the increased number of women in the U.S. Senate. There are now 20. For a number of years, I had a book on my desk that was called <laughs> Nine and Counting, yes, yes. if you remember. Yeah. But what I would like to know, do you think women really govern differently? I'll start with you, Senator Murray, because you had something to do with the increased number of women in the Senate. Well, I think there's several ways to answer that. I think women bring a very important perspective to governing. Uh, I think women that I know in the Senate um, tend to find ways to solve problems and to find agreement uh, rather than being in the you know battle form all the time and I think that's good for how our country needs to work. Let me turn that up a, a notch. Do women govern better or do they focus on different kinds of issues? What would you say? Well definitely women are seen as agents of change and a lot of people want Washington DC to change and I think Patty described it best. I think most of these women that we've worked with on both sides of the aisle go into a meeting thinking, how can we get this done? How can we accomplish this? They don't walk in necessarily with the big, you know, uh, you know, ego of, oh my gosh, how is this going to look for me? They're more concerned about the bottom line. And I think that's positive. And, and so, in, and diversity doesn't hurt. And, you know, all of that has been, you know, so I look at it and say, well, it's Patty and Paul Ryan who got the first uh, budget, you know, bipartisan agreement. And then Barbara Mikulski has worked with her counterpart. And so there's, there's something there to be said. Debbie Stabenow was about to get this farm bill. Yeah. So the things where women have gone in and just done this legwork, just focused on the details, and, and really found that common ground has been positive. How has this evolved since you first came to the Senate? Well, when I first went into the Senate, there were only two women. Uh, when I was elected, there were six. Uh, and I think people looked at us like, are you going to shake this up in a way I don't like? And we had to come in and show that we could work together and, uh, and find ways to really accomplish things together. And I think women have really earned that respect in the Senate today, uh, much more than when I first came in. Uh, but I think the women themselves have really been a driving force because when I first came into the Senate, the six of us sat down and said, bipartisan, we're going to figure out ways that we can know each other better and work together on issues that we care about. And we continue that to today where there's 20 of us in a bipartisan way sit down and talk to each other and respect each other. We, get, to get, we get together for dinner. Right. Is it monthly? About that, it's though. monthly. At least guys, monthly. Yeah. But we've been having such a good time lately that I think by that I mean sharing, you know, ideas and working together. I don't know. Maybe it's a little more than monthly. But the notion is, is that we get together and you know, it's a private meeting, we can talk about anything, and it's a way to really build that relationship, which a lot of people say is what's been missing in D.C. The fact that uh, people go home and don't stay in D.C. haven't built the kind of camaraderie but, that helps you yeah. work across and the aisle. And there's a key part of what Maria just said. Um, those meetings, when we have dinner together, we have an agreement that what is said in that room doesn't go outside of that room. What Paul Ryan and I said to each other in the room, we didn't take outside of it. That allowing us to trust each other, not to say use whatever is said politically against us later, has allowed us to work better together. But the dinners for the women in the Senate, are those, are they purely social or in that quiet way are they getting They're actual everything. work done? <laughs> everything. They are everything. everything. Oh, how many we are Democrats, we definitely, how many are we definitely like to, to chit chat about everything. You know, our you know, our home lives, the challenges of doing this job, family. But it's always an ability to share ideas and really get a better understanding of your colleague. And that's what helps build the common ground is you understand somebody, you understand the, their motives. And, and so we, we really, you know, have a lot of fun, you know, sharing these ideas and it makes for collaboration. Yeah. How many are Republicans, how many are Democrats when you get uh, together? Isn't it interesting? I'm not sure. <laughs> 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 Which is something, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, is it 16 and 4 or Some, 15 and 5? Yeah, something like something that. Like that. Well, no. speaking of women, um, so it's it's partly a coincidence that uh, one of the top women in the U.S. House is Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers of, mm -hmm. of Eastern Washington, and you're in leadership uh, from the western side of Washington. It's a relatively small state. What do folks back there say about uh, the fact that these these two women from Washington are always in the shot when the <laughs> when the House and the Senate are talking? I don't know what people say about it. I think that. Um, it, it's a tribute to our state that uh, Maria Cantwell is uh, 
going to be moving up with Max Bacchus's retirement into a position of chairmanship and uh, on small business, which is really going to be great for our state, uh, where Kathy and I both are in positions of leadership. What that says is our state that is hundreds and hundreds of miles away from the capital has an influence on what is done, what's discussed, and how we get things hey, done I for think our it's state. A, I think it says a lot about Washington State because it says you trust women to be in a leadership position. And, and if you trust women and you send them there, um, they have the fortitude to stay there, then they can help lead the country. So Patty's doing it on her side, and obviously Kathy's playing a big role on her side. So it just, it basically, you know, our state is giving, you know, a face to what women governing is all about. When you came to the Senate, what kind of mentoring did you get from oh. Senator Murray? <laughs> well, I got the best. <laughs> I got the best. First of all, um, Patty sent over uh, a key member of her staff to help me do like the most basic things, like get our office set up. I mean, it was almost like, you know, you show up in Washington, D.C. and you're overwhelmed with everything. And here's this person that knows the ropes and they basically, you know, take you all around. So it was like really being taken in under your wing. And that was a key staff person for Patty. So the fact that that person was something Patty was going to be missing for like two weeks, you know, says a lot about Patty and her willingness to like make sure that I got uh, situated in Washington, D.C. Did anybody do that for you when you came? Well, actually, Barbara Mikulski did. Um, she was from Maryland. Uh, from Maryland. She uh, was one of the two women in the Senate before me and uh, when I was elected she brought me in and uh, said, you know, what do you want to get done for your state? Here's how you get on the committees you want. There is no playbook for be being a senator. <laughs> there is no handbook that you get to read. Uh, it really is jump off a cliff and learn really fast. And it's great to have somebody there that's a, a good mentor. Do you get frustrated with, and I'm sure you do, the, the whole process of trying to get something done in Congress <laughs> these days? Um, I would think, you know, there are times when you probably think, this, this is driving me crazy. Why am I here doing this? Because I'm not making, we're not making progress on things that need to be made progress on. The, you, you can't have anybody honestly answer that, that it's not frustrating at times. Um, but I think... Anybody who's elected to public office at a level where we are um, knows that part of your job is to go and educate and advocate and fight for what you believe in and make progress in, in ways that you can. And, you know, uh, that, that's part of the job that's, that's just tough right now because this country is so divided. Um, but, you know, progress is interesting because just because you don't get something passed doesn't mean that changes aren't happening. Uh, immigration reform is something that, uh, that I feel very strongly needs to be passed in a comprehensive way, not piecemeal and not done wrong. Um, we have worked on this for so long and our state understands this at, a, <laughs> at every level, whether you're talking to our high tech industry or our ag workers or our families that are impacted by that. Uh, and every one of them has to be so frustrated that we go back to the nation's capital and can't get this done. But what we have to do is ha bring a lot of people along to understand where we are today. And that work is part of what we do well, all the time. Well, do, you, do either of you think that immigration reform could happen this year? I mean, there have been uh, some backtracking on expectations on that. Well, we were just at the White House, uh, our whole yeah. uh, uh, caucus with the president um, last Wednesday night and the president said I think we can get immigration done and I was so to me that was a big signal mm -hmm. that the president plans to push on it uh, for 2014 and I think it's wise to keep moving ahead because we know that these current laws don't serve us well that we know more clarity and we've passed a Senate bill now twice that is really a very comprehensive approach. Bipartisan. By, right, 70 some votes. And so I think that we, at least in the Senate, will keep putting the heat on to show that it's a very important issue for us in this and, country. And an interesting part of that is I really believe that if the Senate bill, which is comprehensive and is an agreement and is a compromise, were to be brought up in the House, it would pass. I think it has the votes. So part of the last part of this frustration is to get the House leadership to allow it to come to the floor for a vote. How did the two of you see, as this was shifting about marijuana and legalization in, in the country, 
first in Colorado and Washington State. Uh, as, as, as all of this was evolving, and then we have a vote here, um, and also uh, a bit of you know, a conflict between the federal level and the state level. How did you see this shift? What did you think what was going on there and, and how, you, how the state was going to handle it versus the federal government? Well, I think that uh, all of us were watching carefully what the vote was. The will of the people is what all of us are obligated to um, enforce and to follow. Uh, and I think from our perspective, once the state uh, passed, changed the law, Really, what is, what, are, what is the federal government doing to inhibit that or to allow it and, and what the role is? And I think Senator Cantwell described fairly clearly what some of the things we have to look at are. And Enrique, I think being a pioneer, again, like Washington State is on so many issues, you have to look at, you know, we've been discussing for several years, how do we get the focus on meth, methamphetamine, big problem for our state. And there are many times we'd talk to law enforcement people and they'd say, well, we spend a lot of money on marijuana and not enough on meth. And we'd have to get an initiative every year passed by Congress to say, don't leave us without the resources to deal with this scourge that's being caused with methamphetamine. So we kind of knew that there was, you know, a focus of people wanting the resources we do have to go to higher prioritized problems. But the interesting thing, I think, for me is that this passed in 23 counties in our state. Mm -hmm. This wasn't, okay, King I'm, County and right. a few other places had something to say. When you see something pass in 23 counties, it's a pretty big directive by the people in your state that they want to see the prioritization of other things, uh, or at least they're comfortable with us continuing to move forward on this, you know, big shift. Sort of a mechanical question. Does the delegation, the whole delegation, including the senators, still get together like they used to? They used to have these breakfasts back yeah. in D.C. We did many years ago when I first started. We did. Um, but the time constraints have been really challenging. And I, I wish we could, but it's hard. This, the House is on a different schedule than the Senate. Making, you know, getting everybody in the same room at the same time is challenging. But we do talk to each other about different issues that we're working on. And I think what we've... Um, resorted to, which has been, you know, very focused on tackling uh, an issue. So we had this Howard Hansen Dam issue and whether we were going to get the, uh, uh, basically the Army Corps of Engineers and everybody to get a plan that we wanted. And so we literally brought all of those people, including the then Governor Gregoire, back to D.C. Everybody showed up from the delegation, sat in a room with all of these individual uh, policy officials from all different organizations, and for hours hammered out what we thought was going to be the solution for Howard Hanson Dam. So while we might not, uh, you know, have a weekly or biweekly or even, you know, monthly meeting, we are very focused on jumping on those uh, issues that need attention and working together to solve them. And we all often fly on the same flights. So I can't tell well, you how many sure. times. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. Does work get done there? Each other. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a long flight, right? Yeah. <laughs> how do you uh, work across the aisle with the members of the delegation that are on the Republican side? Well, uh, you know, it's we there's issues you just agree we're not going to agree on. There's no sense the two of us sitting down or the five of us sitting down to talk about an issue we know is politically divisive. Um, but on a, I have a wilderness bill with Congressman Reichert. We actually were just talking on the flight uh, yeah. about how we're going to get that across the, the line in the in the House that, that has been blocking it. Uh, Kathy McMorris Rogers and I work very closely on veterans issues. It's, there's some key issues in eastern Washington that she and I have been uh, working closely on. It, uh, you know, on the issues that are important for your state, we take the time to really work with each other. You have to get it out of both houses for one thing. So the partisanship hasn't divided the delegation too much. I mean, I it's still, you still can no, do what you need I, to do. I don't sense that at all. No, it's, you know, it's a chance. you got to pick up the phone. There's no substitute for picking up the phone and calling your colleague and saying, here's what happened over here. I mean, you would think that everybody understands, but they don't. You know, you're busy in your own chamber, and you have to get a game plan for things that are important to Washington State. So, you know, we've worked with whether it's DOC on, you know, energy uh, policy that we think is important or Kathy on peas and lentils, you know, things that are important for her area. <laughs> I know, everybody laughs Sounds about like soup. It, yeah, that <laughs> you know, no, well, but it's very important. Well, you know, we, it is actually, yeah. we've, we've made a great uh, step in the farm bill to get healthy lunches that includes this uh, peas and lentils pulse crops as a protein source. 
And so we're very excited that uh, Washington State schools are implementing this, but more importantly that we could have a program at the federal level. The Seattle Times wrote recently that in the, in the new spending bill that there was Patty Murray's hand <laughs> on uh, some of the items that, that will be spending. Um, money for Sound Transit's University Link. You're going to be able to avert, avert layoffs at Hanford. Money for Puget Sound. So in the old days, did we call those earmarks? Your, your office issued a press release calling them wins. Is there, <laughs> what's the difference? You know, uh, it's, earmarks is a word that has a very bad connotation. But the fact is that every member of Congress goes back to represent a district or a state to make sure that their state has what they need to grow the economy, to make sure people have what they need. Uh, certainly transportation, uh, research for NIH grants uh, for the University of Washington Head Start programs, um, uh, the investments on Puget Sound uh, cleanup and salmon. Th those are all things that I fight for and I make sure that the language that is written in the bills that I'm part of reflects the needs of my state. If I didn't, I wouldn't be doing my job. So no apologies there, just, just, no, just be careful about for my the wording. State. I absolutely believe that my job is to make sure the people in Washington State have a seat at the table when it comes to federal issues. If you had three wishes, and you could use those three wishes to change Congress, what would you do? How would you use them? Hmm. Boy, that's, that is a challenging thought. Um, I think one would be that we had more of an opportunity to uh, be able to trust uh, each other, uh, that what I said to a Republican wouldn't be a headline tomorrow smashing me. Because, you know, really, uh, legislation is about sharing thoughts. But today, in today's media intense focused world, um, people are afraid to say things, they're afraid to put a compromise out because somebody will gin up somebody against them and you can't get things done without that. So it's not changing a lot, it's more culturally trusting each other. Well, first of all, I definitely would get our sales tax deduction and make it permanent because I'm always tired of fighting to make our Every sales year. tax. You know, we have a different economy here. We have a different tax structure and we get penalized for it. And so we have to constantly fight for it. Um, secondly, I would make sure that every panel that we had in Congress uh, definitely had people outside of what I call the Beltway or outside of like the Northeast Corridor. Um, I almost call it like the Edgar Martinez effect. The fact, I always say to people, well, should Edgar Martinez be in the Hall of Fame when you get into this big deal, you know, designated hitter debate? And I say, if Edgar Martinez played for the New York Yankees, would he be in the Hall of Fame? And everybody instantly says yes. Of course he would, because he would have the notoriety. Well, a lot of the things that we fight for, the policy issues, whether it's health care reform and getting a, a better reimbursement rate for Medicare, we're so ahead of the curve that constantly Congress hears from, you know, the, just the round DC or the Northeast Corridor. And so constantly you've had major change happen out in the West and they don't even know it. They don't even understand it. And the bureaucracy becomes entrenched on these views. So really changing our healthcare system and making it more cost affordable is something that the Northwest is led in. But you, we are having a challenge in getting the rest of the country to see how beneficial that's going to be for all of us to move closer to what we have. Yeah, I would add one other thing that I think is a growing frustration and challenge that I don't know how to change, but I wish it could. And that is the tremendous influence of outside organizations in elections. Um, it has impacted uh, a lot of what we see happening in Congress because people's fear of $25 million coming into the state from unknown sources to tell people something unrelated to that issue but influencing people's opinion is really challenging. Um, we're seeing the Republican Party torn apart right now um, by the divisions that some of the huge money uh, is coming into a lot of their primaries. And, uh, you know, that makes it hard for any of us who, to advocate for things when people fear the repercussion of large money in, in elections. Senator, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Hope we can do it again sometime. Thank you, guys. So, thank you. Thank you. Senator Murray, Cantwell, thank you very thank much. Thank you. While it's hard work, Senators Murray and Cantwell say there are some lighter moments, like when the Seahawks made their run to the Super Bowl. 
giving us some bragging rights in the U.S. Capitol. Next time on The Delegation, we're talking with the freshmen. Susan Del Bene, Danny Heck, and Derek Kilmer tell us what they expected to find in Washington and what they really found. Frankly, Joni, I haven't been surprised, too terribly surprised by much of what I've observed. I mean, we knew it was dysfunctional, and <laughs> boy, oh boy, oh boy. It is strange joining an organization that, as you've seen in recent polls, is held in lower regard than head lice and colonoscopies. Part of the challenge we face is we need leadership to allow us to work together and allow us to work in a bipartisan way and allow us to vote on issues. The Freshman, next time on The Delegation. I'm Enrique Cerna. I'm Joni Balter. Thanks for joining us. Local production and broadcast of the delegation was made possible in part by a generous grant from the Evans School of Public Affairs at the University of Washington. Leading the field in public policy and management education, research, and service for over 50 years. And by KCTS 9 members. Become a member today by going to kcts9.org. Thank you.